Mixing with Mike, plugin of the week comes from Waves. It's the Abbey Road RS-124. The RS-124 is a compressor that goes all the way back to the 1960s, used on many of the Beatles records. It was a compressor that was unique to Abbey Road Studios. It was actually created by them. Uh, they grabbed an Altec 436B, or a bunch of them, brought them into the studio for use on the sessions, realized that they were just crap or just weren't particularly well designed for the work that they wanted to do or the sound they wanted. So they opened them up and basically rebuilt them from the inside out. Uh, and pretty much the only thing they kept from it, as I understand it, is the meter that you see here on the front that says Altec on it and the case that it was in. Uh, that it was placed in. Other than that, they pretty much replaced most of the internal components and designed a series of these different limiters that were used in different ways in the, in the Abbey Road studios. There were some that were better for the studio use, that were more aggressive. There were some uh, that were used in the cutting room for the cutting lathes. In any case, um, these compressors um, were widely used through the 60s and then found their way into the closet and the dustbin for a while and sort of resurrected um, in the early 2000s. Um, most notably, Chandler Limited uh, created a modern hardware version of this where they went back to the original specifications and created a newer version, including some features, which are also part of this plugin. So this is an emulation uh, coming right from Abbey Road Studios with one of the main units with a couple of different tube configurations. And the different tube configurations are reflected here in the studio and cutter versions. And uh, that affects the attack time primarily. So what you have here, uh, I'll go through uh, all of the basics here. There's an auto hold feature. This is a very unique feature that um, what it will do is it will prime the compressor to already start with gain reduction. Because the attack time is generally slow, and it's hard to find specifications on this, but I, I have my feeling is the, the attack time is probably something in the order of 30 to 50 milliseconds. Um, which is which is quite slow, and it's a unit that's designed to have a lot of gain reduction. There are some compressors, especially broadcast limiters, which are often designed to have you know 10, 12, 15, 20 dB of gain reduction built into them, and they often have these long, um, you know, um, multi-stage release characteristics that make the the release very long, so that you don't bring up all this noise in the background. One of the issues with them, though, is unless the attack is super fast. What ends up happening is if you have a loud signal initially coming in where there's no gain reduction going on currently, some of the signal will shoot through. I call it overshoot. Some people, you know, give it different terms for it. So it overshoots the attack time. The attack, the compressor grabs onto it. It creates this thump or this really loud sound that occurs, and then everything gets sucked in and drawn in. What the auto hold does is it actually sets you with game reduction straight away so that when you now drive the signal in, instead of it jumping up or getting this shoot through of level that's really high, it holds on to it and then and then uh, sort of fades it in to the game reduction so it stays consistent. A very handy tool, especially if you're using this in parallel and it's very powerful for that. You have uh, a series of six different recovery times. There's no millisecond values, but they're basically fast to slow. Um, there's an input control. The input control is unique in that the input control serves two primary purposes. It raises the input gain, which is part one, but while it raises the input gain, it also lowers the threshold simultaneously. And the result of the effect of that is most of the time as you're pushing in more gain into it and simultaneously lowering the gain reduction, that you end up having a much closer um, output level to unity. It never ends up being that way, but you won't find that if you have 15 dB of gain reduction that you're adding 15 dB at the output. Most of the time you'll be attenuating a little bit. And in fact, I believe the original compressor unit only had attenuation. It didn't have makeup gain just because of the structure of it. Um, essentially, you have the meter unit here. It can show input, output, or gain reduction. That's how you'll primarily use it. When you look at a meter and you see the primary section of the meter here, 10 to 20, that's telling you that's where it's probably used a lot. You know, whereas 
if you look at, say, like a VU meter, if this was your game reduction meter, you'd say, yeah, this is probably going to be, you know, looking at game reduction settings here, you know, between 2 and 5 dB as its sort of sweet spot. This is telling you exactly how it was used and what you would use it for. All right, so we have the output attenuator, which is just basically a uh, makeup gain or make down gain if you got more coming in um, with the input control. Um, there's a feature here which was uh, created by Chandler uh, Labs, as I understand it. They call it exactly the same thing, um, Chandler Limited, excuse me, uh, which has an RS-124 hardware unit, which you can buy, you know, basically brand new. Um, and it's called Superfuse. And the basic idea, as it's emulated here, uh, gives you a super, uh, gives you a fast attack time and a super fast release time. And in fact, it makes the release time the same as the attack time, which I believe is around 30 milliseconds. And thus, it makes it much more active, pump, heavy pumping and breathing, and thus kind of modernizes it in many ways. So you have those basic features. And then one, a different, uh, one additional feature here, if you hit on the collapse expand button or hit on the little black button here, then you'll end up with an additional section which allows you to adjust the side chain filter, right? Uh, for which is just a simple high pass filter that goes up to 200 hertz, just to kind of um, control the the reactivity of the compression. And uh, you know how if you have a fast release in particular, this comes in handy, just like how long it kind of grabs or holds on to a signal based on the amount of RMS energy you allow through. So you have that, and. Um, and also the amount of game reduction, obviously, it will affect. You have a wet-dry control right here built in. You can link the two channels or keep them independent. And then you have a whole separate monitor section. Now, you can operate the compressor here. This is just for listening purpose. So this will just show you what you're listening to. Listen to left channel, stereo, mono, etc. So that's just something that you'll see built into all of the Abbey Road plugins. Um, you have the studio, uh, the stereo. Duo, which isolates the two sides, separates them, so the side chains are not linked together. They operate independently of each other. Or mid-side mode, so it gives you all of those basic controls. Uh, you'll notice that when you switch it to Duo, it separates so that you can adjust the two sides independently. You can override that if you want to keep them the same, but uh, sometimes, uh, like on a mix or something, it will open up a sound if you switch it to Duo instead of having the side chains linked together. All right, that's the basics of it. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and, and make a little bit of noise here. So I've done this on a, a I put a variety of different things here. I'm going to play a little bit of it, and then we'll kind of go through some of the original sounds, and, and I'll point out some, uh, some of the basic features and show you some of the things and, and how it kind of uh, dials in or works. Um, well, so let's listen a little bit here, and then uh, I'll dial back, and then we'll dive into some signals like, you know, bass, maybe some guitar uh, vocals, etc. Okay, so this is the basics of it. So for this, essentially what I have in here that we're going to go over, I have a parallel mix here for some heavy compression. I have a mix bus compressor, so we'll go on here with a wet-dry control. So I'm also doing a little double parallel there, but they're doing different things. I have something here on the bass sound, right? So we're going to go through that because this is one of the things they sort of uh, recommend it for. So we'll start there. And then also something on the vocals. So we'll work in all of these different elements. Let's start with the bass sound first. So on the bass sound, essentially, if I bypass this here, I also you could see I have it primed with the auto hold. But let's let's uh, listen to it here. This is without. So you see I have like a slightly brighter and a slightly warmer texture here, one for the cutter, one for the studio. If I take this off, you'll kind of hear what I'm talking about with the overshoot. Right, so you just kind of get that little kind of pop through of the first attack. Now I can make this a little bit more 
active here. So let me just kind of, you know, go to a faster release. And if I really want to make it kind of pump and breathe a little bit here, let me just go to the superfuse mode, which will, it, it actually bypasses the the uh, the recovery setting here, and uh, um, it also um, uh, increases. Uh, well, actually, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure if it increases the attack time, but it drives it a little bit more. So let's check this out. So that adds a little bit more grit to the sound. I can also drive it a bit more. Let me kind of back this off. Let's see what that sounds like in the mix, maybe just with the drums here for a second. So I like that grittier sound better. So let's kind of roll with that and see how that flows with the guitars. studio sound here for a second all right so we have that dialed in so you can see how how you have a range of different settings there which at first seemed kind of subtle when you look at it and think it's like 15 db of gain reduction it doesn't sound like it's necessarily being squashed you know like most compressors are and that's kind of a very cool feature of broadcast limiters and you know there are certain limiters that are kind of designed to work that way the 2254 is you know uh, you can do similar kind of things with the Fairchild, uh, with the, um, you know, um, LA-2A, et cetera, right? 1176, we can get heavy amounts of gain reduction and it doesn't just collapse. Um, here's something that is, oops, uh, oh, I also did some uh, uh, individual parallels here, so we'll kind of go through some of those things. The other thing is the lead vocal here. So I just wanted to go through this, because this there's some uh, really cool stuff that you can do with the lead vocal here, so I wanted to touch on that. Let's just open that up here, and uh, let's dial that in. Sitting on the ground, facing the static, can I look for a way to roll over? Murder by satellite, a praying man is, at least I'm an organ donor. It's automatic, so see my tree, ah, ah, you're making me itch. So sentimental, so suicide, what a way to exist. So you notice when it goes to its release time and it starts to release, the auto hold will switch over. Sometimes that is not what you want in in which case you can just automate that feature on or off to for wherever you need it just to prevent any thumping or any overshoot that might occur um here let's do a similar kind of thing like if i wanted to get more aggressive with it i'll go to superfuse mode let's just drive a bit more input into it in this case i went to the cutter but let's just see sitting on the ground facing the static can i look for a way to roll over Murder by satellite, a praying man is, at least I'm an organ donor. It's automatic, so see my tree, ah, ah, you're making me itch. So, sentiment. so one thing that doesn't happen here is that the auto hold uh, doesn't uh, connect in between there in, in, uh, um, uh, or maybe it's just the amount of gain coming in that's stopping it from doing that. I think that's really what it is. Here, let's let's see if I can uh, detail this a little bit and kind of mix some of this in. So do it in parallel kind of fashion. 
Sitting on the ground, facing the static, can I look for a way to roll over? Murder by satellite, or praying madness, at least I'm an organ donor. It's automatic, so see my tree, yeah, yeah, you're making me itch. It's the era that really brings up the breath and the ambient energy there. Let's see what that sounds like in the track. Sitting on the ground, facing the static, can I look for a way to roll over? Murder by satellite. So the cutter seems to be a better match for the vocal, kind of filling it out a little bit more. But really cool. You know, I love that. And just that having that parallel function there really helps, you know, uh, to to um, add to the character of it. Now, there also are a whole series of parallels that I added on here to each of the sections. This is just something that I do in mixes. So I have like one for the background vocals, one for the lead vocal, one for the guitars, are this like a like sort of spacey guitars, and then there are guitars in here that are um, um, uh, there are guitars in here that are uh, more uh, excuse me um, are are more rhythm guitar based, and uh, and then I got the drum parallel. So let's just uh, check those out. So what I'll do here is I'm just going to bypass them. I set them up for unity gain, and I'll keep my fingers crossed that I did a good job. Uh, so that way you won't hear a level change, but you'll hear the effect of the parallels of these. And I'll just open one up just uh, for the visual. All right, here we go. Sitting on the ground, facing the static, can I look for a way to roll over? Murder by satellite, I'll pray. hear how it really opens up the depth you know i think in here i use the super fuse on the drums you're going to find yourself using that a lot on the main guitar parts i also use super fuse right so just again like like maybe that's a theme here uh this one i didn't with a slow release because this was more the textural guitars that are more sustaining and some keyboard elements that come later in the song uh, the lead vocal, more super fused. So this is probably, I'm doubling up the energy of this on what I did on the lead vocal track. So it's probably unnecessary or I could exaggerate that. Um, and on the background parts also. So a lot of super fused type of stuff. Driving the input control is a really important part of the sound. You'll find that not only are you getting more game reduction, but you'll get more interesting textures. And if you kind of play around with the input control the studio and cutter, and then whether you're using Superfuse or not, and then the recovery settings, you can get a, a pretty wide range of possibilities. So whenever you look at a at a you know compressor and you see an input and an output control, <laughs> you know, and a you know recovery time, you're not thinking like there's a ton of options. But when you start to add it all up, especially this this input control is so important. To, to bringing in different textural sounds to so really play in on that. I also did, because you can never have enough compression or enough mix parallels, I also did one over here. And uh, this is just a, a texture. I'll just mix it in just to kind of show you a little bit of what this is doing. Uh, I guess I went super fuse crazy. What can I say? Here we go. Sitting on the ground, fishing static, can I look for a way to roll? It's probably a little bit over the top. So here, let me let me do this. I'll go to another uh, kind of mode here where I go to like a slower kind of glue sort of thing. I'm going to drive a lot of energy into it, but I'm going to take the super fuse off. Slower release, so it'll just really hold on to everything. Sitting on the ground, fishing static, can I look for a way to roll over? Murder by satellite, I'll pray. It's on me. 
that's a, that's probably a better balance to all the super fuses that I threw in where you got everything sort of hyperactive. Here, just having it this way, sitting there on 20 dB of game reduction, but driving, I'm getting, you know, like a certain grit or character, but it's holding on to everything, you know, and so you hear like how everything kind of comes in a little more solid and a bit more focused when that's placed in. So, um, and then one on the mix bus as well. So you see, I have auto holds on all of these. I don't think it's necessary always. Um, uh, to be honest, I haven't experimented a lot with getting small amounts of gain reduction with it um, because I've just been more excited about driving it a bit more. And everyone always complains in my videos that I never like smash the crap out of anything. So now, now you can complain about the opposite if you want, if you've made it this far. So here, I'm just kind of getting a little bit of a pump and breathe, no super fuse. So you know, kudos to me. Uh, and now we could switch between the two different unit types here to get a tonal texture. What I did here was I also mixed in, so there's still a, there's going to be a big amount of, of game reduction here. I'm just stacking up my parallels here, you know, for vibe, but let's just check what it is inside and uh, in and out. And then we'll uh, um, uh, crack it open and maybe play around a little bit with some of the settings. Sitting on the ground, facing the static Here, let me uh, let me do this. Let me go back over to the B setting so we can compare this. And uh, let's see here. So if I go up to the full mix, just so you can get a sense of what's going on. Sitting on the ground, facing the static canal. Right, so I can use the side chain here to make this a little bit more reactive. Sitting on the ground, facing the static canal. Let's actually, uh, let's drive it a little bit less. Do something more subtle. So this is a time where you probably might want to turn it off because it's not as heavy game reduction. Let's check the tone types here with the cutter and the studio version. Sitting on the ground, this in static and I look for a way to roll over. Murder by satellite, I'll pray in madness. At least I'm an organ donor. It's automatic. kind of like the cutter setting here you know they both stage it very differently it's interesting how that attack time change shifts the character of it and with the fast breathing movement just kind of opening up with the side chain you can see how there's some flexibility now let's let me switch it to duo mode and let's just see if this kind of opens up the mix a bit in a cool way sitting on the ground facing the static can I look for a way to roll So if you get a, an, an idea of it there, you see how just using it that way really opens up a lot. And the switching this to duo mode really opens up the mix in, in a really cool way that I love. So 
loads of options here in terms of the way that you use it. Um, this is uh, um, I loaded it up, and in the more I played with it, the more I found fun, really cool, creative ways to work with it. Um, uh, great, uh, you know, it's always hard to tell. You know, many of the emulations for for gear that I do, I've worked with the hardware. In this case, I've come nowhere near um, uh, the same. You know. Uh, um, continent is <laughs> as the original hardware that was emulated here, but um, uh, I never worked in Abbey Road Studio, so it wasn't even in the same building as it. Never mind seeing one, so it's hard to tell, you know, like based on that what it's like. What I judge more than anything here, because the trust waves, but also just the usability and just the sound, just listening to it. it it's actually something. Um, just listening to it here and working with it that just works incredibly well functionally well in a mix and also gives um some really great tonal textures and sounds that i could add into my work and so i you know blown away by it just straight up so uh there you have it plug of the week waves abbey road rs124 uh, if you're interested in the band the name of the band is uh, new luna the song title is called mantis you can uh, check them out on any of the streaming services. And uh, there you have it. Mixing with Mike, plug-in of the week. Waves Abbey Road, RS-124.